Welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Backerl D'Angelo, your host. Well, I made it through. And you're probably saying, what is she talking about at this point? But, you know, I say I work in retail and, uh, well, Black Friday is over for me and I just have to work three more 10-hour shifts in a row. And I'll be done with the second busiest week of the holiday season. All right, so here we are. We've finally made it over to the Tobin Center, and it's Origin Day. And in Origin Day, we're going to see another small collection of ships. And you look at how much Origin has to offer. They're generally just versions of the same ship. That's not a bad thing. I love the fact that they could do variants and take a platform and change it in just a couple of minor ways and have a ship that's more geared towards combat or more geared towards cargo hauling, which is weird. We'll talk about that one in a second, or more geared towards exploration, etc. So we're going to go to the showroom floor. We're going to have a few issues trying to get around, but, you know, I don't mind having to leave and come back because Origin... It might not be the best ships in the game, and I might really be high on RSI, but Origin's always been a close second for me. As we enter the main showroom hall, it almost looks like there's a massive ship in front of us, instead of the 890 jump flanked by the variants of the 600i. These are beautiful ships, but they suffer from one thing. We were sold pictures of them before CIG started production, on the actual flyable ships. And what happened was there was no design language. There was no idea of how components or different gameplay was going to work. So they just throw a whole bunch of compartments in these ships. And the one that suffers the most is the 600i. Now the 600i was supposed to be a modular ship. It was sold to us with the fact that you could either buy the touring module or you could have bought the exploration module, or you could buy the ship and have both. But as is the case with CIG from the early days, a lot of these ships are sold before there's any of this worked out. So currently we're left with two variants. I don't know if this ship is ever gonna get the modularity that was promised. And at this point, if they just give everybody both variants, it most likely won't matter. But the biggest issue is, how the interior design is just kind of thrown in to the ship and done in such a way that the design language feels like somebody was doing it from a flow of consciousness instead of by sitting down and really thinking about where things would go. You have this huge bridge, which I kind of like. It's very reminiscent of the bridge that's on the 890, so I'm not going to go on the 890 and show you that because that could be a whole episode by itself. But it's really minimalistic, but has a lot going on at the same time. Nice little area for your suits and stuff. And then this. What is this? I, I, I know what this is. This is the star map, but I, I don't understand the design here, right? It's kind of like just... Let's make this the area where they're going to do some scanning and let's throw a couple of chairs in it and a big ball of holographic star map and yeah, we got it. And it just doesn't make a lot of... It, it, it just breaks where they are today. And then off to the side you have an armory and it's not anywhere where you're actually going to leave the ship. Could have been on the lower deck. Just, you know, things just don't make a lot of sense. And instead of going through each area and just knocking it, I'm going to say, take a tour for yourself. Sometimes these ships are available in different locations for you to see. And if you miss it this year, you can see it next year or watch one of the videos. I will fly the ship a lot because I do like it. So I like the exterior. It's nice. But a lot of this just doesn't make a lot of sense. And I know that luxury gameplay, there, there's an idea, a concept in somebody's head that's not fleshed out. And when it does get fleshed out, I'm sure this ship is going to have to have some kind of a rework. 
Now, because the ship is two variants and one of them is going to be your luxury transportation variant, it has kind of a weird design layout with the cargo hold, captain's quarters, and this massive area with absolutely no personal space for the crew. It, it really just didn't make sense the day I got the ship for the first time, but when you fly it, it really doesn't matter until you start thinking about how much wasted space is on the ship and how much better this ship would have been if it was just constructed today. If it was concepted, designed, and produced today, the ship would be amazing. All right, I'm gonna get stuck over here now because things are broken and you can't get out of here. I'm gonna let myself get stuck and then we're gonna move on because I had to come all the way back and I'm not gonna make you see it. So as we're walking off to the first hall, I know that there is a redesign of the interior that's scheduled for the 600i and it will come out. I just hope they're able to do it at a level of the ships that they are releasing today. All right, and now we're gonna talk about a ship I really have nothing negative to say about, and that's gonna be the line of ships, the 300 series. The 300 series right now begins with this one, the 350R, which had a much better concept in the first release of this ship, with two giant engines back here. And what the advent of this ship was, is that it was stripped down of its weapons and armor, to become lighter and faster for racing. Today, what we're left with is just another 300 series that looks like the others. 325A is the first ship that I really got excited about. It's supposed to have upgraded armor, more weapons, and the ability to hit something with a massive mass driver in the nose of the ship. It's changed over time. Still a nice ship to fly. Not my favorite of the series, but definitely it packs a punch in luxury, in style, and it's a nice stopping point, but I think there are many, many, many better ships. Origin isn't confusing enough until you start looking at how closely packed their ships are together at the lower price points. This is the 135i, one of the better ones of the entry-level ship. It's small, packs a nice punch. It's a nice starter ship, but there's probably better ones. If it's fighting in style you want to do, this is the right ship, though I think the cargo variant is probably the better one. And let's take a look at it. It's all right. You can put some boxes inside, put some boxes in the back. You have a place to lie down, no place to go to the bathroom, no place to eat, so it's dry food and peeing or squatting out the door. I'm not picking on the ship. I own one and I think it's nice. It's a good starter, just not one of the better ones, but who cares? If you like it, I think it's good. The 315P is my favorite variant of the 300 series. It's able to carry 12 SCU, and in that 12 SCU, you can carry three, four SCU boxes. While not impressive, that does allow you to do many of the early hauling missions in this ship. Something the Intrepid is gonna find difficult to do until they put more one SCU box missions in the early hauling game. But this ship also has a tractor beam. It's probably the lowest cost ship to have one. Now it does give up some firepower for that, but the person that is going to buy this ship is going to be more interested in non-combat roles and doing box missions and doing hauling mission. The lore of this ship also suggests that you should be able to stay out later and go further, and that might just be with some upgrades to the different components. Nonetheless, this has been a staple in my hangar for a very long time. I'm a big fan of this ship, I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy it in real life. If you want to, thank you, and if not, it's a fun ship to pick up in-game. Inside the 315P, or all of the 300 series for that fact, you're going to find a very elegantly designed 
lazily designed interior. It's just a big open space with things shoved along the sides. Today's design has a lot more depth to it, but each one of the 300 series has this huge center glass in it, which more than makes up for the, I, I guess the design elements that they skipped over here. Nonetheless, I don't care that it's lazily designed. To me, it's still beautiful. Well, I don't find a lot of wrong with the 300 base series. I don't find a lot right with it either. There are so many better ships that you could buy in this price range that will help you get more things done. But if you're looking for an elegant, sleek, beautiful ship, the 300 series might be for you. So in the next haul, we find two more 100 series ships and a ship that I will spend a little bit more time on. The two 100 series ships here are the 135 off to our left. This is the cargo version. It does have an issue right now where the cargo area is sitting on top of the ship. It might be a graphical glitch from textures on my side, or it just might be something with the server desync going on right now with all of the people here for free fly. He's a cool ship, but something about the 100 series just is confusing because some of the ships here are close to or more expensive of their 300 series brothers. While I find that a little bit difficult to get past, this is a high-end luxury spaceship. And when you think about this company, think about BMW, and now each one of their cars have different variants. Everything from a 300 series BMW goes all the way up to an M3, which is, oh my God, more expensive than the first five series. So let's just say that's where they're going with their lineup here. 400 series ship is the first one that I believe was designed and built with a common language, knowing where everything was gonna go. And it is one of the first ships that looks like Lando Calrissian himself in Star Wars would buy. I like this ship. I love this ship. I fly this ship a lot. It is nowhere near the best ship, nowhere near the worst ship, and it does have its issues. People complained about its high stance, so they lowered the gear. Now you can't fit a rock or many of the other different vehicles inside of its cargo hold. Not being able to carry the vehicles I want, there is a dedicated space in the nose of the ship for an X1, which we're not talking about today because right now I don't like my X1. And I'm not going to talk about the X1, which is supposed to fit in the front of the ship when it gives me so much problem trying to get in the front. So the 400 series, great luxury ship. I'm going to do a separate video on that as soon as this holiday weekend is over. This is the 100. It's just a very base ship. If you like the design, it's a great ship to buy to start the game. I think it's uh, 60 or $65 for the starter pack on this ship today. And if you like it, I would get it. It could do box runs, it could do small cargo missions. It's something to start off with. Our last stop today is going to be the lower hull and we're gonna find a racing giant. This is the M50. It used to be an interceptor, or it is currently an interceptor with the advocacy. I don't know how. It doesn't have a lot of firepower. It's really fast, accelerates like a bat out of hell. And it's just cool looking. The idea of this ship was to give somebody a nice racer. And there was supposed to be a computer programming, kind of like they have on the Formula One cars right around here somewhere, where you could tweak the different parts of the ship to make it go faster or make it turn tighter or and that never came into being. I don't know what their idea is for the ship in the future. I still hold on to mine because I love F1 racing and this is the closest I get to it. And after the disappointment of this ship, I didn't want to buy a razor even though those look cool as hell too. So off to the hollow hall where we're gonna see nothing. The only thing that's gonna be in here is gonna be that unique vehicle that Origin is making, the luxury G12s. And although I still own one because I think it came with the 400 series package I bought, I, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it because right now, I'm not sure how much I love these. 
They look like bugs, little beetles, and if they don't call it a beetle, I don't know what they're going to call it. I, I just don't know how useful these ships are going to be yet. Now, vehicles are a dime a dozen. You can buy them in-game, and that's how I expect you to buy them. So I'm not going to talk very much about them until we actually have them, and we can get inside them and drive them. All right, let's go off to this final part of the hall and then end this episode. And over here, we have kind of a weird ship. This is the shuttle two-person touring vessel that comes inside of the 890 Jump. We didn't really get deep into the 890 Jump today because I love it, but there's so many videos on the interior of it, I'm sure you can find a little bit of time to go out there and seek them out. Workphologist is the one I would look for. This is a good ship. It's fun to fly, fun to take a friend. I have one in my hangar as a shuttle to get back and forth between different locations. All right, folks, it's a shorty, which is why I think going back to the old, and well, when dynamic server meshing comes in, going back to the old calendar where each manufacturer was out for two days and they would have two separate halls or two levels of the hall that you can go to. And that way you don't have to make it there in the 24 hours that these ships are there. You always have a second time to see it. So there's almost no way for me to get into the ship and I do find a way into it. And I'm just gonna go through the 890 jump a tiny bit. I know I just said I wasn't gonna do it, but you know, as I'm coming up those stairs and the biggest thing in the room is this, I just thought I should just enter this ship and just show you how luxurious it is. You could spend an hour going through the different compartments of this ship and talking about them. Or you can just do one of the boarding missions or repel border missions inside of the security job function, whatever you want to call it. You know, pick up a contract to save the 890 jump and you'll get a great tour as you kill all of the pirates trying to take over the ship. But this is just luxury at its most. And I have little negative things to say about the ship, but I do have a couple. Okay, and I'm just going to hold them to myself because no things are going to be like big deal because it's just gorgeous. We're going to go up on the bridge and we're going to end this episode. Like I said, the 400i and this share some design elements and they're pretty nice. All right, folks, if you like this episode, please click the thumbs up button below. If you are a subscriber or have already subscribed, please click the bell shaped notification icon below so you get notified of all my future videos. If you do want to get into this game, there is a referral code down below in the description. And of course, with that said, you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching my videos. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left. You can support the channel by going to Patreon by clicking the button in the upper right. On the left, you'll see my latest video. And on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.